Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, and I just realized I gotta change that intro, like, screen, because it's now alexmerced.dev, not alexmerced.com. So just so you know, if you're watching this, it's alexmerced.dev going forward. I have to find a way to get back my domain, but, uh, <laughs> oh, what happens when you're not paying attention? Um, but anyways, moving forward, what I want to talk about today is data modeling. Okay, so what, what does data modeling mean? It's just meaning like, how do I represent data in my code? Okay, how do I represent it in my code? So generally when we think about JavaScript, there's generally gonna be two main structures. There are other things like map sets and whatnot, but generally we think of objects and arrays. And the first step is just trying to think about when I should use one versus the other. Okay, so generally if I had a variable called cat, Oh, I made a whole bunch of code I didn't want. Okay, we'll say const cat versus const cats. So generally when I think of something as singular, okay, like cat, I'm going to think of an object. So the idea is, okay, I have this object, and that object represents a single cat. Okay, but maybe I want to group many different cats Okay, and then generally what I'll do is I'll put them into an array. Okay, so let's kind of see this at work. So now that I have, I know that this object is going to be the structure I'm going to use to represent a single cat, the next step is thinking about like what properties should the cat have. And there's two things you need to think about here. What is a cat? So like what are the properties that should capture the reality of a cat? But two, also what do I need? You don't want to have properties that you are not going to use. Okay, so for example, I might, every cat might have a name. Okay, so we'll call this one Fluffy. Okay, um, you know, a cat might have an age. Okay, and we'll say like five for Fluffy. And then, you know, we'll be like, is fixed. Like, you know, has it been neutered or spaded? Okay, and then that can be a Boolean. We'll say false. Okay, and then we can say, like, does the cat have a, a biological sex? Okay, so we'll say male, Fluffy's male. Okay, so we can have something like this. Okay, so this, this object now is one cat. So my data model for a single cat are these properties. So I'm saying, okay, hey, whenever I have a cat object in my code, it should have these, these properties. Okay, that's my model. That is sort of how I organize the way I'm going to think about this. And the idea is that that's a contract. When we say there's a contract in coding, what we mean is that generally we all are in agreement that these this is the model. Okay, so if somebody else writes code and they create a cat, they should stick to the model. They should stick to the contract. So that way, if I write a function that does something with a cat, um, we can all make the safe assumptions of what that cat should include in the object. Okay, and we'll come back to that. But in this case, you know, I might add that cat into the array. Okay, so that first cat, and then I might make a second cat. Okay, uh, we'll say like Spike, the name of the cat, and we'll call this cat2. This one will be age6, is fixed. Okay, and then see, I can add cat in the array. Okay, and you see like this array is made up of multiple cats. That's why it has the variable name cats. And this is really important because I'll see a lot of people who don't take this extra step in naming the variables where they'll name a variable that has one cat, cats, or they'll name an, ar name an array cat even though it has multiple cats, which can make the code more confusing to read and harder for somebody else to kind of understand what you're trying to do. So again, not only thinking about modeling your data for the purposes of how the data looks like, like again, what's my, what properties are in my object, but also think about like how you name your variables are gonna make your code much more concise. And, and now here's the thing, this is all fun and good, but you see, I, I wrote up this whole object. Okay, and then there's a chance that, you know, somebody else might go make a cat and they might make a typo. Okay, oops, okay, so now this cat, even though they have the same number of properties that have the right information, if I were to write a function that tries to do, you know, the use the isFix property on a cat, 
this one's going to end up having an error because the is fixed property has the wrong the wrong key, the wrong name. Okay, because of a typo. So again, the the idea is that I could just write out every object, but if I do that, there's more chances for me to make mistakes. Okay, more chances that I don't meet that contract. I don't meet that commitment that we're all going to define cat the same way every time. Okay, so generally this is when we start trying to figure out, hey, can we make that more programmatic so that way it's not on me, it's not on the programmer to actually have to write is fixed every time. Okay, and we could create a function to help us create the cat. And I do realize classes are an option, um, although I just want to limit like, how deep I go into different JavaScript functionality today. But essentially, you could use classes. Okay, we, we might do an example of that afterwards. So what I could do is I could create a function. Okay, or I'll just use the function keyword, function. And generally we want to have function names that also help make it clear what we're doing. So we can call it construct, or we can call it create cat. That will be the name of our function. And then the function takes in a name, age, is fixed, and sex. Okay, that's it's going to take in those four things as arguments. And then what it's going to do is it's going to return an object with those properties. Name, age, is fixed. And again, if, you, if you're if you not familiar with like all the syntax with arrays and objects, I do recommend watching my array masterclass and my object masterclass videos. Uh, and then coming back and rewatching this video, it'll, it'll be a lot, you'll get a lot more from it. Okay, so see, now I have this function that will now return the object. So in that case, I don't have to actually name these properties because it's going to have basically the variable name determines the name of the property because again, object shorthand notation where if I just put in a variable inside of a new object, it'll take the name of the variable as the key and then take the value of that variable as the value for that, that, that property in the object. So basically this create cat function, I can now simplify my code to look like this. So I can instead now do create cat, use my create cat function, and said pass it fluffy five false male. Okay, and then I can get rid of all this. And see now there's no there's really no chance that I'm gonna get those property names inconsistent. Okay, because I have this function that is going to make the object exactly the way it looks. I just need to provide it the information and it'll create that consistently made object that meets that contract. Okay, and then I can again replace this over here. And this make big this like spike six true. Okay, and then this is technically now I'm doing the same thing. But now my code looks a lot simpler, okay? Because I wrote this one function, I'm not right now. Everybody who wants to make a cat doesn't have to like do all that work, okay? Because the create cat function is doing all that work for you, okay? So nice, okay? And then again, we can console log the array. So we'll just like actually run this so you can kind of see that work. I'm gonna console log the cat's array. So let's run that node uh, data modeling.js, and you can see. I console log and there is an array with our two cats. Okay, so I could use a function as a way to kind of do that contract. And this is totally a fine way of doing things. I kind of like using functions. But again, there is, classes are built in the JavaScript as well. So another way I could have done this same thing is I could instead of created a class. Okay, so I'm going to comment this out. And instead, let's create a class. So I will do a class, and we'll call that class cat. Okay, and again, generally class names are uppercase. So see, the variable cat generally represents the actual individual cat, while the class cat is more like the cat data model. Okay, so uppercase is always the model. Okay, singular uppercase represents like this is not a actual cat. It's the the contract, the cat. What is a cat? Okay, and basically, again, when we're doing this in JavaScript, we would do we would create a constructor. Which essentially does the same thing that our that our previous um, thing did. Only difference is that now we would just do again the same arguments: name, age, is fixed. And again, if you want to understand like how classes work, I do have a classes masterclass and a OO, JavaScript OOP masterclass video where I explain like what the constructor is and this whole syntax here. Okay, and then I would just say this dot name, 
equals uh, name this dot age equals age this dot is fixed equals is fixed this dot sex equals sex okay so this is essentially the same thing so instead of writing create cat now i would just do new cat new cat because i'm using a class you have to use a new keyword and whenever i say hey new cat it's going to use this cat that i defined and essentially what i'm doing is i'm this is really running this constructor function so it's taking those arguments that i passed in and then assigning them to the new object that's being created Okay, so I end up in the same place. So now, like, if I run that same code, see, I get the same thing. There's my two cats. The only difference is that now the cats actually have an official, like, type. Like, they, they are now known as a cat. So now I can do something like this. Console.log. We'll say, hey, is the first cat, so cat 0, that's going to be the first cat, is it an instance of cat? So what that's going to do is going to say, hey, is this object a cat type object and it's going to return true or false so let's see what it does and see it's true because technically this is a cat object so that's a cool thing when you do use classes to create different types of objects um, you can then use that instance of operator in cool ways to make sure that hey like hey did you actually pass me an object that is a that meets the cat contract okay like is it was it made with this thing so that way I can assume that it has certain things that the class defined Okay, so again, you know, data modeling, the idea here is to kind of create the tools so that way, again, you don't have to rewrite the same stuff over and over again. But again, you have to imagine you're working uh, in a team of programmers and you're all writing cats all over the program because maybe you're writing a cat video game. Okay, and you do not want to be having to define the same things over and over again because it just means more room for mistakes, more tedious code. Um, so you and you want to make sure that everyone's kind of working from the same playbook. So classes are a really good way of doing that. It kind of again provide now we can use that instance of operator so that I can write functions that make sure that you give me a cat. Okay, so for example, let's say I do this. Let's write a function called is cat fixed. Okay, notice like my function names kind of like are very clear as to what the function is going to do. So just basically based on this function name, I can kind of assume that what this function does is that it checks if the cat's fixed and returns true or false. Okay, so this is kind of like that's what I would get from that name. Okay, so again, this is going to take one argument, which we'll call the cat. Okay, and essentially what this function is going to do, first thing it's going to do is going to check, hey, if uh, the cat is instance of cat. First it's going to check, hey, is it actually a cat? Okay. If not, it's going to return, well, actually what I'll do is we'll throw an error. Okay, did not pass a cat object. So that means what happens is that if this if fails, this thing is going to run, this throw line is going to run, and it's going to say, hey, you, you didn't give me a cat object. Now, in the, in the situation that it is a cat, then the if statement is going to run, and what it's going to do is going to return a value. And again, the function ends at the return value, so that throw will never run. It'll return, okay, uh, whether, a, you know, a cat dot is fixed. It's just going to return that property because it's going to be true or false. So that's going to give us the answer. Okay, so there, that's done. So now let's actually try that out. Console.log. First, let's actually run it on an actual cat. So cats zero. Um, actually, I want to pass that to, you know, is cat fixed? Cool. And you can see, like, if I hover over the function VS Code, uh, we'll give you a while. If you hover over it, it should give you some more information. Sometimes it takes a while. There you go. So you can see it, it'll give you some information. So I can see, like, how that, that function works. So I can see that it takes one argument called cat. Since I'm not using TypeScript, it doesn't give any further detail, but if I was using TypeScript, then it would. Okay, now let's try giving it just another object. So let's actually first I'll create an object. Const Alex equals, and again here we have an object of me, name 
Alex, you know, age 37. Okay, now let's see what happens if I try to pass Alex to the is cat fixed option function. Okay. Okay, and you see, like, see, it did run. So we see it did run the first time. So, like, um, so this false is from the, the, uh, the is cats fix this line here. But then right under it, we have the error. And see, the error it gives us is the error that I put. Throw did not pass a cat object. And see, it says the error did not pass a cat object. Okay. So it works. So, again, these are the kind of the benefits you get when you use classes over just creating like an arbitrary function like I did earlier. But the idea is that regardless of how you do it, what you do is you're creating a way of, you know, creating a contract. Okay. Um, yes. And then you can create functions that use the class and, you know, you can go forth and go abstract as much as you want. But the idea is like when you are going into writing software and you're thinking, okay, hey, there's this thing that we're going to make a lot of you want to think, really sit down and like think about what that data model is, how you're going to represent that data. Is it an object? Is it an array? Because is it a lot of things? Then maybe I want an array. Is it an individual thing? Then I want an object. Okay, how am I going to name my variables along those same lines? Just thinking about sort of again like what is it that you're trying to create an example of in your data? You're going to find that you're going to write much cleaner code and you'll be able to think through what you're trying to do much clearer. Okay, if you just sit there and just take that time to think through, like, okay, what is my code doing? So in this case, my code, what it does is I just, I create cats. Okay, I'm creating a couple cats, and then I'm checking if those cats are fixed. Okay, so so my cat, my is cat fix function should tell me, hey, is the cat fixed? But it should also not, you know, throw an error if other types of objects are passed. But because I have a cat class, I'm able to do that. I'm able to check, hey, is the object you gave me a, a cat? And if not, I can throw an error. So, um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. My name is Alex Merced. There's so much more you can do. This like data modeling is certainly an art because you also want to think about like how you use the properties in the future. Um, also making sure like, hey, like is it, for example, something like um, total number of cats wouldn't be something that would be a property on an individual cat. Okay, um, or or aggregate or total age of cats or something like that. So then you might want to actually have a class called uh, cats, and then cats might cats might have functions that have to deal with operating on many individual cats. So then really you have this one class that's cats that's really just an array of individual cat objects, but again each of them have their own sets of functions that operate on that level. So it's again thinking about what you need to do. And trying to model that in a way that's like, instead of you just trying to think through everything procedurally, you can kind of think through it in sort of a way that feels like um, you're thinking about a thing. Um, and that's, you'll, you'll get a uh, much better composition of your code that way. Uh, and be able to kind of create this sort of agreement with other developers on your team about what you're making and how to write code for it in a way that, hey, when they write something, you can understand it pretty quickly. And when you write something, they can understand it pretty quickly by, both ways. So my name is Alex Merced. Have a great day. And again, it's alexmerced.dev now. Okay. But of course, there's always devnursery.com uh, and so forth and so forth and so forth. Uh, and again, make sure to follow me on Twitter at alexmercedcoder. See you all later.